The Australian sugar industry has always been a dynamic one, always ready to improve itself. But its origins were tough and even tragic. In the 1860s, Pacific Islanders, the Kanakas, were employed as forced labour on the Queensland cane fields. Today the Kanakas are gone. So too are the incredibly hard-working gangs of hand-cutters who followed them. Now, progress has also caught up with the little steam locomotives that have so reliably hauled the juicy stalks of giant grass to the sugar mills. The tiny Quinaba mill near Bundaberg is about to phase out the last of the old locos still serving in the cane fields of Australia. Ever since Stevenson's rocket first chugged along its track, the combination of water and heat has held a certain fascination for the young and the not so young. Ron Atkinson has been looking down on the world from an engine's footplate for almost 30 years and earning calluses on his hands. Experienced drivers such as Ron Atkinson know that steam engines are more than clever arrangements of steel and brass. They're living creatures with a raging fire in their bellies and an insatiable appetite for coal and water. And each has a personality of its own. Two locos of identical design from the same builder can behave like children from different families. That's part of their magic. It explains why they demand special care and attention and why they capture the hearts of those lucky enough to gain their friendship. Today, Australia is the second largest exporter of raw sugar and leads the world in the mechanical harvesting of cane. The flashing blades of the last professional hand cutters disappeared just over a year ago. This year, they'll be followed by the tireless steamers who pull their harvest along more than 3,000 kilometres of light railway line to the nation's 33 mills. Ron Atkinson talked about his long career on the Northern Tramways with Weekend Magazine reporter Peter Greer. What made you take it up? Oh, when I was a little child going to school, I used to watch him going past the back of our place. I used to, the line used to just go past the back of our place. I used to think to myself, you know, when I get old enough, I'll be able to get on those things, and which I did do. How will you remember them then, with affection or as hard, hot work? Oh, well, I mean, it's, uh, I wouldn't say uh, actually affection, but still and all, I, I enjoyed every bit of the time I spent on them. But when I first came, there was only very small engines, very small ones. You could only pull about 20 trucks at a time. Then you were scratching to get up some of the hills with them, but uh, they've got a lot bigger engines now, and uh, things have changed a lot since then. At the birth of the Queensland sugar industry, more than a century ago, farmers processed small amounts of cane on their own properties with primitive machinery. Once bigger mills were built, transport became a major problem in the northern wetlands. Light railways were the solution, with horses doing the hard work. An enterprising gentleman named John Spiller is credited with being the first to use a steam locomotive to haul cane at his pioneer estate near Mackay. That was exactly a century ago. His engine was built locally at the former Victoria foundry. Most of the steamers used later came from England, although there were some from Scotland, France, Belgium, Germany and the United States. At one time, 250 engines were working in the cane fields. After World War II, Australian builders took over, but within a few years, the days of the steam locos were numbered. The last of them appeared in 1953. Well, I've decided to see it go, really, because, uh, you know, they've been a jolly good old workhorse in their day, and uh, there's no doubt about that, and a marvellous machine. And I wouldn't mind putting another five or ten years even on them if they'd have been staying here. But still, I suppose, a diesel is a lot faster turnover. There's no wasted time like the steam engine.
Quinaba Mill is part of the Milliquin Sugar Company, which is in turn a wholly owned subsidiary of Bundaberg Sugar. It's the smallest of the company's four mills in the district, with a compact tramway network only 30 kilometres long. And it's because the system is so small that these antiquated veterans have been able to keep the young diesel upstarts out of the old boys club for so long. The firestorms which paint the sky above the cane paddocks every season are probably one spectacular feature of the tropical north that will never disappear. A clean burn not only removes dead leaves and trash, but also drives out the rats, bandicoots and snakes. The ash and soot is sometimes called Bundaberg snow, for it can carry for kilometres to the clotheslines of sugar towns. Cane deteriorates rapidly once it's burnt and must be delivered to the mill as soon as possible. Fast and reliable transport is essential. The success of the whole crushing operation depends on a constant supply of cane to the mill, and the growers rely upon the loco crews to replace loaded trucks with empties. It's a huge game of chess, with the drivers keeping one move ahead all the time. These days, the sugar mill tramways are models of efficiency. Time is measured in dollars and cents, and the unrelenting wheels of progress are leaving the romantic age of steam far behind. The new heavyweights have made themselves at home on the old gauge of two feet, or 60 centimetres, although the creaky bed of ballast often needs strengthening. Some rail systems are more than 160 kilometres long, with train schedules worked out by computer and there's not much change out of $200,000 when you go shopping for an ultra-modern diesel. Despite the energy crisis, industry officials are confident they've backed a winner. This year, the other crews will switch to diesel power, but Ron Atkinson will return to track maintenance. Narrow gauge enthusiasts, however, are keen to adopt the old workhorses to save them from the scrapper's torch or the ignominious fate of being laid to rust in some neglected playground. Well, we say goodbye to the old girl before we go. We won't see her next year. 